guys what's going on welcome back to my channel my name is Jessie and today I'm going to be doing a video that is a bit more personal um I did touch on this topic before in another video but basically I've had a bunch of like dms and messages even emails asking about my story with this condition um and kind of like tips for how I deal with it and at first I felt a bit uncomfortable giving advice because like I still have the condition like I'm no way like cured or whatever but um, I don't know, I just thought I would talk about it and honestly, knowing that I'm not the only one out there that suffers from this, it's been a big relief. So I figured, let me talk about my journey and hopefully this helps you guys too. So yeah, keep watching. I'm sure you can tell from the title of this video, but I'm gonna be talking to you about my journey with dermatillomania or skin picking disease, excoriation disorder. I'm not quite sure if I say that one correctly, but most people I think know it as dermatillomania or skin picking disease disorder. So just a little insight into what dermatillomania is. It is technically a mental illness characterized by OCD behaviors. Um, essentially what this means is that someone with dermatillomania like myself we scratch and pick at our skin um obsessively to often to the point of bleeding um sores infections and i'm sure there's a bunch of different like reasons why people think they're doing it but it all does stem from this obsessive compulsive desire to pick at our skin um me personally my thoughts when i do it it's like i don't want to have a bump on my face so in my mind i think i'm cleaning my face by getting rid of you know small pimples and stuff um obviously that isn't the case i'm clearly making my skin worse um i end up with like pus filled cystic acne um just like open wounds and scars and you know not nice like even skin um it does leave a lot of like discoloration in my skin where i've picked but yeah i think it's like it stems from this desire to have smooth skin which obviously to someone that doesn't suffer from this probably doesn't sound like it makes sense because why would we pick at our skin to get clean skin i might have a tiny pimple and i just i gotta get rid of it it's almost like i'm too impatient to clean my skin and do this whole routine to get rid of the acne um and instead i think i can just pick it off and make my skin smooth so yeah i'm not sure if that really explains it well but if you also suffer from dermatillomania you probably know what i'm talking about when i say we want to clean our skin um if you don't suffer from this it might not make sense but yeah just know that it is technically a mental illness and it is characterized by the ocd tendencies so dermatillomania is technically a chronic condition meaning that it is something that people typically have for the majority of their lives um it can obviously come and go like get worse and better um for me personally mine gets worse like exponentially worse when i'm stressed and i'm stressed quite a lot because I'm just in that season of life where everything seems to be going wrong um but yeah so for me um i do tend to pick all the time um but i try my best not to obviously but like that's hard um but yeah definitely when i'm going through periods of stress my picking gets 10 times worse and i'm usually way more covered in blotches um but obviously that's gonna be different for everyone like there's some people that might only do it once or twice a year might only do do it every few years like there's some people that are going to be doing it 24 7 like do 65 like um it's definitely going to be like an individual kind of characteristic in that sense but medically speaking it is a chronic condition that typically stays with us for our lifetime people can just do it almost out of boredom like i'll be i don't know i could be driving my car and without even realizing i'm picking I might get to wherever I'm going and my face might be covered in blood like it it's hard to explain because you're probably thinking like well why do you do it like like what made you do that in the car but like the same could be said if I'm watching a movie like oh it's the hardest thing like if I'm home especially if I'm home by myself watching a movie or something I don't even realize what I'm doing until I'm physically in pain from the wounds that I've done um and you know so maybe i suddenly notice blood in my hands and i'm like oh, crap like like jess what the heck are you in and it's like it's almost like 
I don't want to say we're in a trance, but like it's almost like you end up in a type of trance and just do it without even realizing it. Um, same thing, like I've been in class in college and I'll be listening to the professor lecture and kind of, you know, get lost with it and clearly I'm bored, but I don't realize that what I'm doing is I'm taking my hands to my face and scratching and picking. And my point in this is it can be due to anxiety and stressful moments in your life. It can be due to boredom. It can be just the desire to clean your face and get rid of those lumps and bumps. Or it could just be for no reason at all. Like it, it, it really can just come out of nowhere. Um, that probably sounds really strange to a lot of people, but like that's the best way to explain it. Like you just don't realize you're doing it until you've done it and then you probably feel mad at yourself like I do, so. Yeah. I have been picking probably at least since I was eight maybe um probably even younger I actually yeah definitely younger um little backstory my mother passed away when I was eight years old um and I remember from her and lots of other people telling me these stories that I would pick and scratch on my head after I had the chicken pox um my mum would put band-aids like plasters all over my face and my body to stop me picking but it didn't really help um I still have a few like indents here from where I picked so hard as a kid so I can't remember it being terrible when I was younger but it was definitely something that has always always been there and I don't think it was probably as severe as it is now as an adult but it's definitely something that I've always done you know here and there I do remember being in high school and realizing that I was picking and like realizing that it was something that I didn't want to do I remember really being conscious of it because um you know in high school you're going through that age a lot of people have acne and stuff the thing with me is that I never had bad acne like my skin naturally was pretty good um I never broke out much you know I'd have the odd pimple here and there and stuff but very seldom like it wasn't like you know i had a big full face of cystic acne or anything like that which a lot of teenagers do like it's completely normal um but saying that i remember being conscious of picking and having scars as opposed to pimples um it was something that i noticed probably when i was like like 13 14 15 ish um but it, again it was never terrible it was on and off and then when i really realized how bad this was getting is when I moved to America which was about six years ago now um I I don't remember if it was like straight away if it was maybe like the big lifestyle change or anything stress I don't know but it just got worse and whatever happened to trigger it it probably I don't know I probably went from maybe one or two scars on my body that I obsessively picked at over and over again to probably like 20 to 50 at any given time um my main place that i pick is my face which is obviously i would say the worst because it affects my confidence the most obviously this is what people see the most you know um i have also had periods of doing it on my arms like my upper arms here um the tops of my thighs um, I had one on my butt cheek once and for the life of me I could not stop picking at it. Um, I don't know if that's too much information but just to show you it doesn't matter. You want to pick it wherever it is. Um, I had this one on the side of my toe and I picked it so hard and so deeply over and over and over again that I basically couldn't walk in sneakers anymore. Um, I was having to wear flip-flops and air it out, but obviously then having my foot exposed meant that I was more able to access the spot and pick it over again. It was, honestly, I probably had that scar for maybe a year over and over. Like, I'm very lucky that that didn't get more infected and cause me more problems. So yeah, about, I'd say four to five years ago is when it got so bad that I realized I, needed some help um and i want to mention i didn't know that this was a condition i genuinely genuinely thought there was something wrong with me that was just me like i had no idea that it could be associated with ocd or you know mental illness or 
anything to do with anxiety, let's say. And so I went to a doctor in America, should I mention, and basically we came to the conclusion that I had dermatillomania and um, first, honestly, I felt so much relief at the fact that it was a condition. Um, that might sound strange because like I was happy to be diagnosed with something, but it was almost like I was being heard in a way. Um, I don't know how to explain it. Like it was like it made sense. Like it wasn't just me and me being a freak and something being wrong with me. Um, it was an actual medical problem, which not that that was fun to hear, but it gave me a lot of relief in the sense of like, okay, I have a condition. Let's understand this condition. What can we do about it? Um, it kind of gave me hope that there was a way to cure it, I guess, get out of it, um, to stop those habits. And I'm picking up my arm as I talk to you. Um, my arm has gone red. I tried wearing gloves at night, um, driving with gloves on, driving with mittens, you know. Um, I've tried the stress ball technique, you know, just to keep my hands busy. I, I don't know, I've tried everything that you can think of to not pick, um, but it didn't work. You know, sometimes it would work and I'd be like, yes, my skin's better. And then, you know, it would just go back to normal and I'd destroy everything. Um, and then the last thing, which I think he really focused on um, was basically how it's affected my life. Um, and now I'm in nursing school, so I understand this aspect a lot better. He said to me that like me coming to ask for help was the biggest step because obviously it's showing how much it was affecting me to the point of me actually turning to someone and saying, what the heck do I do? In terms of how it affected my life, honestly, it affected my confidence so much over the past few years um or the past you know 10 years whatever um i remember not wanting to go to parties in high school because of it um not wanting to go on dates as an adult it, it got in the way so much that i didn't want to go out the house like i would avoid plans and avoid seeing friends and honestly i didn't show up to a bunch of classes at one point because my skin was so bad i was so so mortified what i had done to myself um, I don't even know why it affected me so much because I didn't know anyone. It was like a one semester class. I, you know, was probably never going to see those people again. But for whatever reason, it wrecked me. Like, I I must have missed at least 50% of that class. Um, somehow I passed. I'm not sure how. But, you know, I did the work at home. But it, it got to the point where I didn't want to go to college. I didn't want to leave the house. I didn't even want to go to, like... I don't know, Starbucks or something to order because I thought people would stare at me. Um, and obviously the thing is with covering it, how I said with makeup, when your scars are freshly picked, they are so red that you can't even cover them with makeup because it's, there's no skin over it to even cover. It's just, you know, it's a few layers down and it's almost like raw, raw flesh and you just, you can't hide it. He mentioned using tweezers and that, was kind of like a little wake up call for me because I have used tweezers to pick up parts of my skin for the longest time, let's say. Um, especially at my feet, um, my face when it gets bad, my arms, like the ones on the top of my thighs. And I think that I can really access from that angle. I often will use tweezers and peel the skin off. So, as I just mentioned, I've tried so many different ways to deal with this by myself, um, both before seeing a doctor and after. Um, like I said, wearing gloves and mittens, um, using stress balls, um, what, what are those spinny things? Remember those things that you could hold in your hand and spin around? You probably know what I'm talking about, I can't think of the name. Um, I got three or four of those when they were popular and I would, I did play with them, I did like them, but if I wanted to pick, I'm throwing them down and I'm picking. Like, it wasn't enough to deter me from picking and scratching. Um, I've tried having things on my skin, like masks and creams, so that if I pick, it's almost like sticky and slimy so that I can't physically pick. I've tried having my nails as short as possible. Um, I've had fake acrylic nails so that I can't actually pick, if that makes sense. Um, like it, the, the nails kind of prevented me from scratching 
But you know what I would do is I would rip the nails off and pick anywhere. Mine, I would say, is moderate to mild. I've seen people that suffer from it in a lot worse of a way than I have, but also I acknowledge that mine can get pretty bad as well. Um, there's nothing specific that treats dermatillomania. It is definitely like a collaborative effort, you know, possibly medication, lifestyle changes. Um, there's like cognitive behavioral therapy aimed at reversing the urge and like habits that we have created. I've personally not tried that, but I can acknowledge that my skin is a lot better now than it was about a year ago. And that gives me a lot of hope. Sometimes I will notice people at school staring at my skin and I'll just say, oh, I know I picked last night so bad and they're like, you picked. And I'll tell them about it. And I think me talking about it openly as an acknowledged condition has helped me accept it and also deal with it and like improve my skin. One thing that has really helped me stop picking as much is having clearer skin to start with. So I said at the start of this video that I don't naturally get a lot of acne. I do here and there, you know, before my period, I tend to break out a bit more, but it's never crazy. But my thing is, whatever few pimples I do get, I will pick them for months and months and months. They'll be there, like, literally for ages. I found this cleansing device. Um, I actually got a few cheap ones from, like, Coles and Marshalls and things like that. And I kind of liked the feeling of them, but I could tell that they weren't the best quality. And Honestly, it was by complete chance someone messaged me trying to promote their like, I don't know, multi-level marketing, what's it called? Um, you know, like the pyramid schemes where you sell for a company. Um, someone messaged me trying to sell some products from this company called New Skin. And at first I was like, oh, really, like, please leave me be. But then I realized what she was trying to sell. Um, sorry. And one of the things was a cleansing device for your face and I looked more into it. Um, it is pretty expensive, but I read the reviews and I was like, ah, this, this might work. And I probably sat on it for a few months and was like, no, I can't spend that money. Like I have shitty skin, like that's just the way it is. Then I eventually took the plunge and invested in it. And I would say it's helped me a lot. Like it's definitely not cured it, but it's made my actual natural skin a lot, lot better in general, which means I get less pimples. And that means I have less things to actually pick at. Um, sometimes I will just pick at the skin in general, but the majority of the time with me, I will pick at the small pimples that I have. So it helped me a lot in the fact that I just didn't have as many spots on my face to attack in the first place. Like I said, it's a very expensive device, but it's one of those things that if you want to invest in your skincare, um, whether you just want better skincare in general or whether you are like me and you want to see if it will help your condition, um, it was probably the best investment I made aside from going to the doctor in the first place. Um, but yeah, I'll link the product down below if anyone's interested. Um, I'm so tempted to pick right now. I don't know if you guys can tell. I'm just trying to rest, but there's one here. Mm. It's hard. I, it, it's really hard to resist the urge. Sometimes I will find myself literally sitting on the floor picking at my feet or I don't know just sitting in bed like I said picking at my face for over an hour like it'll be such a long time before I even like snap out of it and think what are you doing girl like stop it it really does like it, it's almost like time stops and then you suddenly like crap like what did I pick I was doing so well like a few days ago I was feeling so proud of my face like I was just like wow like it really is starting to look look clear overall and then, I don't know what happened, I suddenly realised that I had picked every single spot or pimple on the face and I was covered in blood. I wanted to show you how my skin looks now with my makeup off, so I'm gonna just wipe it off for you guys. Um, I'm not really a makeup person, but I do use powder. Um, typically, my skin is bad on my chin. Um, and then my forehead. I don't know if you can see some of the scars coming out here. This one is fresh. I picked this sometime this morning. As you can see, it's not like a scab. It's it's a wound. Like, it's a fresh open wound. Um, 
I usually have big ones on my forehead. I don't have many right now. You can see there, but you can also see how big the scar is. Can you see that? You can see how that scar is like whiter. It's like the pigment has been lost from where I've picked so often. Um, I often get them here in the center of my head um, and then around my nose. I'll be honest, my skin is very, very good for me right now. Um, this is probably the best it has ever, ever been. But as you can see, yeah, now they're like exposing more. Um, as you can see, I still have some. Um, and then I have quite a few on my arms right now. Um, and my feet are completely destroyed as well, which is a nightmare because I start school again in a few days and I have to be at the hospital on my feet all day and I'm gonna be in agony. But yeah. Wow, look how red I just got from wiping. It's also been a lot, lot worse. Like I've had my nose completely red, um, looking like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer because it's covered in blood. Um, I usually have way more on my chin, like this size, like all around here. I have them all in the corners of my head here. I think I gravitate to here because my hair can cover them a bit. So my makeup obviously does a pretty good job at covering it at times, but when they are freshly picked wounds, um, the makeup won't hide it, it's it's gonna come through. And then the makeup ends up looking cakey and crappy and yeah, it's just, it's not a good look. But yeah, anyway, this was a strange video for me to make. I'm honestly surprised that people wanted to know more about this condition. Um, I guess that means there's a bunch of people out there that suffer from it as well. This video was just basically me talking to you for ages but I do hope it helped you in some way. Um, I just want to end on the fact that I'm a lot, lot more confident now that I truly understand it's a condition and as much as I feel like it's my fault at times because I'm the one that can't stop picking, I do now realize that it is something kind of beyond my control. Um, obviously, I can control my actions but the OCD part is a big part of it that is uncontrollable. Hopefully if you have this condition it's shown you that you are not alone. Um, maybe it's shown you that this is a condition. Maybe you're like me and didn't realize it was an actual diagnosable medical problem. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions feel free to comment down below. Um, if you don't feel comfortable writing a public comment, feel free to message me on Instagram because I understand it can be embarrassing, but please try and not be embarrassed by it because it is normal in our world of dermatillomania and everyone's gonna need some support to deal with it. Like if I had known other people that were doing this to themselves as well, I think I would have felt a lot differently growing up. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I just really hope this resonated with some of you guys and I'll see you in my next video.